Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss when do we have to prepare a consolidated tax return. Simply put, a consolidated tax return is a tax return where you have a parent company and you have a several subsidiaries. And what happened is this, all this group, parent sub one, sub two, could be sub three, many subsidiaries or affiliated groups, they file one tax return. Before we discuss this, we have to basically go back and discuss when do we consolidate financial statements what is what does consolidated financial statement means same concept you have a parent company and you have sub sub and another sub and they all file the same financial statements consolidated financial statement they are all consolidated with the parent company well gap requires that to happens when you have more than 50 percent control when you have more than 50 percent control so if the parent company have more than 50 percent of the sub sub one sub two sub three could be direct or indirect then you have to consolidate well for tax purposes it's a little bit more dif little bit different some entities require only one single consolidated tax return and in other circumstances what's going to happen is the parent will file separately and the component will file a separate return as well why because when we file a tax return we cannot follow gap we have to follow the irs revenue code versus gap so in this session we learned that under gap you need 50 percent plus then you can consolidate as far as financial statements when you file your tax return, the rules are a little bit different. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Let's talk about the IRS criteria rules. What are the requirements? Well, the parent company have to have at least 80% of the voting stock and at least 80% of each class of non-voting stock. So notice, you have to own more than 50. You have to own at least 80 for tax purposes for the voting as well as non-voting stocks. And the ownership here could be direct or indirect. Although the parent must meet this requirement in connection with at least one directly owned subsidiary. So that has to exist also each company has to be in the group has to has to be a domestic rather than a foreign so when you when you're consolidating another corporation the corporation has to be a domestic u.s corporation to be more specific so to summarize is if you own between 80 to 100 percent and the corporation is domestic well you have two options here you can consolidate or the subsidiaries can file their own tax return that's fine if you own less than 80 percent of a domestic corporation guess what then you cannot consolidate remember for tax purposes is it's 80 percent then each of these subs will have to file a separate return if you are dealing with a foreign subsidiary regardless of the percentage even if you own 100 percent they cannot file a tax return with their with their parent company in the u.s once they are foreign that's it they must file a separate return if you own less than 80 percent they must file a separate return if you own between 80 to 100 percent then you have the option either consolidate the affiliates with the parent or the subsidiaries with the parents or you may want them to file a separate return now why file a consolidated versus a, se versus a separate return we'll look at different scenarios later but simply put if you have an intercompany profit or gains they are deferred what does deferred means it means they are not taxed until the asset is sold outside of the consolidated parties and we'll look at this a little bit more in details later if you have inter inter entity losses which is not usual to have inter entity losses those are also not deductible until the transaction is finalized it means with a third party it, it the, the asset leaves the consolidated entity now the good thing is losses incurred by one affiliate may be used to reduce the 
taxable income from another affiliate. So if you have one affiliate with gains, they may uh, put profit. They can they could be used to offset the gains and losses could offset the gains. Gains could offset the losses amongst themselves. So that's the good part. So this is an overview of the consolidated tax return. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at MCQs, additional exercises, additional resources that's going to help you understand this topic. This topic is briefly covered on the CPA exam, but mostly it's an advanced accounting course. In the next session, we would look a little bit more in depth about consolidated tax return. Good luck. Study hard. Stay safe.